Three crypto traps to avoid. I'm going to tell you about it so you don't get caught out. Hey everyone, my name is Leon. I'm a content creator over at Collective Shift here, where we try and keep you updated in crypto by giving you the best up-to-date information and tutorials to help you on your crypto journey. In this video, we're going to talk about three things. The three things we're going to talk about is unit bias. This very powerful psychological phenomenon. We, we have to understand it so that you don't get caught out yourself. Number two is inflation. All of these tokens have a native staking option where all your coins you have are actually being diluted away from from you. And number three, we're going to talk about crypto custody. Do you actually own your coins? Does FTX own them? Does Binance own them? Then Coinbase, do they actually all own it? Or do you have it in your own wallet stored safely? If you enjoy the content, make sure you like and subscribe down below. And if you are one of these crypto enthusiasts and you want to get up to date, especially if you want to unlock your financial wealth and freedom, make sure you check out the description below for the 10% discount code to the Collective Shift platform. All right, let's get started. All right. So I've got a small analogy just to kind of demonstrate unit bias at work. Okay. So I've got a nice pie here. It's a full baked pie. It smells wonderful. It was made by my grandma. It's got lots of apples in it. So it's a really great pie. Okay. And then next to it, I'm going to sit another pie. This pie is only one fifth uh, of a slice of a different pie. Okay. Which pie are you going to choose? I'm pretty sure most people out there would choose the entire pie, right? They wouldn't choose their little slice of pie. What if I told you both of these pies weigh 100 grams each? I'm pretty sure most people out there are actually going to eat the whole pie itself and not the slice of the pie, okay? Regardless of what the weight of it is, even though they know the full weight. That's unit bias at work, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I'm gonna give you the actual definition of unit bias, especially in crypto, okay? The tendency for people to want to complete a unit of a given item or a task. OK, this is think about this in Bitcoin, how they can't uh, try. People think they can't buy a whole Bitcoin. People believe there's an optimal unit size. It's usually one or 100 or 1000 or some kind of full decimal that makes a wholesome and rounds them. You know, they want to get through to the end because they get satisfaction from completing it. OK, it's that whole psychological factor behind it. Now, Gene Simmons did famously do this himself. He made he made a tweet and this is super popular in the crypto community. Let's read what he said. So this is from Gene Simmons, a popular rock star guy. So for about 90 cents, people could can own one ADA or Cardano coin, 90 cents, right? I do. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, almost $53,000 per coin, I wish, ha, is beyond the reach of most people, right? I own that too. I like ADA because anyone can invest. Of course, it's always up to you to do research, Google it. Now, this is unit bias at work, okay? He's saying that a lot of people can't afford Bitcoin because it's $53,000 per coin. But a lot of people don't understand. You don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin, okay? Just like you don't have to buy a whole ADA coin for 90 cents, you also don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin for $53,000, okay? Let's move on and see what else we can glean from this. I've got a whole bunch of information for you here, okay? So let's go on and read. The crypto unit bias usually afflicts uh, novice investors, people who aren't aware of unit bias themselves, okay? I've gone through this, so I wanna share this information for you. People who feel that owning a whole Bitcoin is psychologically important, and therefore the asset is too expensive. So they think that for Bitcoin, they have to own one. And if it's too expensive, then they have to buy something else. They have to buy altcoins. And then they turn, turn the attention to alternative cryptocurrencies, affordable cryptocurrencies instead. This is a huge psychological issue. OK, do not be caught out by this. I have done this many times. Let's go ahead and keep reading here. The implication that one cannot afford a Bitcoin because they don't have the means to purchase a whole unit. Did you know Bitcoin is divisible by eight different units? They're called Satoshis, okay? You can buy eight, uh, 0.000008 or 0 0.001. This is one of the biggest misconceptions in Bitcoin, especially in Bitcoin, also in Ethereum and any other larger cryptocurrencies. This also happens not just in crypto, okay? This happens, let's say, for gold. People can't afford one whole gold bar. So what do they do? They divide. They divided it. You can buy gold coins, gold jewelry, gold backed exchange traded funds, ETFs, or even gold backed digital assets. This is crazy. Let's have a look at some of the uh, different coins and tokens that this might affect, okay? We can have Bitcoin here, which is trading at 20,000 US dollars. Now, people will come and say, I can't afford 20,000 for one Bitcoin. I can't buy a whole thing. But let's say if you go into it, you can go to different services and buy 
a small amount of Bitcoin. Okay, let's try and convert $10 to Bitcoin. You're going to get 0.0005. Now, if Bitcoin appreciates in price by 10%, you get that 10% appreciation as well. Okay, you do get it. You don't have to have a whole Bitcoin. You still get it. Now, let's go back and actually look at some of the other cryptos that unit bias is heavily targeted towards. You can see here, Bitcoin is 20. Ethereum is 1.5K. Uh, Tether and USD stable coins are the same. They don't change price. But let's go all the way down to XRP, Cardano, Dogecoin. It's just especially a unit bias at work beautifully. Okay, look at Doge, Dogecoin. It's 0 0.06 cents. It's only six cents. You can buy one and look at Shiba. It's not even one thousandth of a cent. It's 0 0.0001 cent. That's incredibly cheap, right? You can buy a million of them. Absolutely. But is the price going to go up? Is it going to reach a dollar? Not really. OK, so are you being afflicted by unit bias? Let's move on to number two inflation. Inflation is super important. Not a lot of people know about this. OK, this is a famous GIF by a uh, Fed pal. Uh, this is him printing a lot of money in the US economy. This isn't quite what's happening in crypto, but you should still understand what's happening. Every token in the crypto ecosystem usually has some inflation schedule. OK, this is Bitcoin's inflation schedule. I'm sure you guys have seen them. When Bitcoin first started in 20, 2009, there were 50 BTC given out per block. OK, ever since then, it's called the halvening. It halves every four years and the every four years is the line you can see here going down. OK, so in 2013, we started to get 25 Bitcoin, 2017, 12.5 Bitcoin, 2021, 6.25, 2025, we're going to go down to 3.125. And by the time we hit 2037, there's going to be 0 0.39 BTC mined per block. OK, this is the inflation schedule of Bitcoin itself. Other tokens have their own inflation schedules. I'm going to introduce you to a website called Staking Rewards. OK, this website tells you what the staking rewards are, because how crypto works or how Bitcoin works currently is that there's validators all across the world. They use their computing power, their hashing power to try and secure the network. They get rewarded. They get rewarded usually in the rewards token of that uh, crypto ecosystem. It might be Bitcoin, it might be Ethereum, it might be Solana, it might be Polkadot, whatever it is. Okay. So all of these tokens are being sent out as inflation to the rest of the um, of the uh, 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 miners using their energy. Okay. So we can see here Ethereum has a reward of 4.78. Solana has 5.31 inflation at the moment. Cardano has zero, which I really don't believe. BNB chain 4.25. And you go all the way down, every other token has inflation reward. OK, so my question to you is, are you being inflated away? Your crypto that you hold, is it earning by its nature 5.31 percent or is someone earning that on top of you? You need to find out how to stake your coins. Find out in Collective Shift where we can give you the best info to where you can stake your coins. OK. It's very important you also do understand it's not just about inflation, it's about deflation as well. And we'll be doing a video on the Ultrasound Money website where you can find out the inflation versus deflation and where the token is actually sitting, right? Okay, so at the moment, Ethereum did go through the merge. Basically, what it did was it switched from a proof of stake system to a proof of it switched from a proof of work system to a proof of stake system. At the moment, the supply of Ethereum is very, very low. The inflation of Ethereum is very, very low. OK, they're saying they're issuing six hundred and three thousand tokens per year, which gives it a, uh, a inflation rate of zero point three two per year based uh, after you calculate the tokens being burned from the ecosystem. OK, so there is a supply and then there is a demand. In this case, the demand is very, very close to the supply. So they're saying they're only actually inflating by 0.32 percent per year, which is pretty good, in my opinion. And we'll move on to number three. Number three is about cold storage. Whenever you have your coins and tokens and they live on an exchange, Binance, FTX, Huobi, HitBTC, any exchange, Coinbase, you have to realize you do not own these coins. They do. OK, the only way for you to actually own your coins is to take them off the exchange into your own custody, perhaps into a cold storage Bitcoin wallet or a hardware wallet. We have a ledger, a treasure, a keep key over here. These things allow you to take custody of your own 12 key phrase password. OK. 
every time you sign up to a new service and they don't give you a 12 key phrase password, that means they have control of your secret keys. They can shut down anytime. Now, I'm sure you guys know, let's have a look at some of the pros and cons of a hardware wallet. Some of the security, the ease of use, the price. Hardware wallets are designed to prevent hacking as its digital assets, private keys are well protected and usually they're protected by yourself and the hardware wallet itself, in, even when you connect it to a computer. Web wallets are considered least secure because sometimes people can get into your web wallet itself. They can sign transactions without you physically clicking on it. The ease of use. Hardware wallets are less convenient to use compared to hot wallets, although they do give you the best security out there. Hot wallets are easy to use online. What about the price? Hardware wallets are sold at relatively high prices, but you can't put a price on security. Let's find out why you can't put a price on security, okay? People lent their coins, people deposited their coins onto Celsius. Celsius itself was a lender. They took your coins, they went to do stuff with it, and they gave you a small return of your coins. You didn't own your coins, okay? Well, it turns out Celsius, the things they did with their coins, it ended up being very, very bad. They lost a whole bunch of money, around $1 billion. If everyone goes and tries and really to take out their coins, it's not there anymore because you do not own your coins. Celsius does. A lot of people need to actually realize this. So this is Celsius filing for chapter 11 bankruptcy and they're in the court system now and they're trying to get the funds back and they're trying to figure out how they can repair everyone because not everyone's going to get their money back. There's no money to give back. Now, I'm also going to finish this off by telling you about the nine crypto largest hacks in uh, 2022. OK, people need to know this. OK, whenever you engage in DeFi activities, whenever you sign a transaction, whenever you like uh, put it, you bridge your funds over to another exchange or bridge it to another EVM compatible chain. All of these funds are stuck on the blockchain, okay? And then people can exploit these. Every time you give, you sign a transaction, you give a, an app access to your wallet, it can be stolen. These are the biggest hacks this year, okay? We have Axie Infinity at $625 million. Wormhole Bridge. What happened in the Wormhole Bridge was a Solana bridge. People were bridging from Ethereum to Solana and the, the bridge was saying, oh, we have these funds, but no, we don't actually, okay? It was just a number. It was all wrong. And then we have Beanstalk, 182. Harmony Bridge for $100,000, $100 million. Qubit for 80 million. Fade Protocol, 80 million. Casio, 52 million. This is incredible okay you have to take control of your own coins if you're interested in this do not leave your coins on an exchange do not leave your coins on a uh, hot wallet at all please take them into a cold crypto custody wallet like a ledger or a treasure or a keep keep all right, guys, so those are the three traps I think you should really avoid in your crypto experience, because when I was going through this, I wish I knew all of this. So this is super valuable information, in my opinion. In this video, we've had a talk about the three different traps that we have mentioned. Number one, unit bias. Do you suffer from unit bias? Have you had it before? Do you know others who have gone through unit bias? It's a very powerful psychological thing, right? Number two, inflation. All the tokens you have, they always have an inflation schedule, okay? There's more tokens coming onto the market. Are you holding Holding it in just by itself and being constantly diluted away? Or are you actually staking your coins to try and get a little bit part of that inflation schedule as well so that at least your coins also appreciate? And number three, custody. Who's actually keeping your coins? Do you have them yourself? Ask yourself that. That leads me to my action for this time. I want you to move all your coins onto a cold storage device. I want you to take your coins off the exchanges so they don't get to have it. They don't get to keep it. They don't get to use it belongs to you. Take it into your own custody. I've got two questions for you now. How much of your portfolio is actually in cold storage? Okay. I want you to seriously look at your portfolio and tell me how much is in your cold storage. And number two, make sure you comment down in the comments below. What coins do you have and what is the inflation rate? Okay. Have you found out your inflation rate of your coins? Are your coins being diluted away? Let me know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, that's it for now. I'm going to leave it here. This has been Collective Shift, bringing you best information in the industry at the moment. Make sure you check out the links in the description for the 10% discount code to the Collective Shift platform. And of course, make sure you check out some of the other videos over there. See you soon.